Here at the University of Finley, we are fortunate enough to house the Maza Museum. The museum is home to many original famous pieces of art that have been used for children's books. For some of these books, the authors and artists made mistakes on the first draft that were changed in the published work. One interesting example is Will's Quill, or How Goose Saved Shakespeare, written by Don Freeman and published in 2004. Don Freeman is an American author who wrote children's books. He was born in 1908 in San Diego, California, and died in 1978 in New York. In his life, he worked as a jazz trumpeteer, a freelance artist, painter, and printmaker. He mainly focused on becoming an artist because he forgot his trumpet on a subway in New York and was forced to quit his job as a trumpeteer. Don wrote his first book with his wife for their son, and this was the start of his career as a children's book author. Don believed his books to be a form of theatrical expressions, and most of his books were written from personal experiences. Freeman said, Creating picture books for children fulfills all my enthusiasms and interests and love of life. In the book, Will's Quill, the author changes the original picture to the publish to better fit the main focus of the story. The original painting shows Shakespeare speaking with the directors of the Globe Theatre and Will the Goose in the background. Behind Will, there is a town. In the published work, it has been taken out and replaced with a country scene. This better fits the focus of the story because Will is a country goose. The importance of this change is that the country scene behind Will reminds the reader that he is not a city goose that is casually seen around town. But Jake, I thought that Will the Goose was the main character of the story. In the original, he is off and to the side and blending in. Why is this? Great question, Paige. You see, this is exactly why he made such a drastic change from the original to the final painting. He made it so that Will the Goose was a center of attention, placed in the middle of the picture, not being blocked by anything. Will no longer blends in with the background like he did in the original, and this allows him to be viewed more as the main character of the book. So Paige, we already noticed that the town has been changed to a country scene from the original painting to the published. What other changes have occurred? Good question, Jay. Another substantial difference is the change of temperature of the colors between the two paintings. The painting on the left has colors that are cooler, which create a grungy and busy feel to the town whereas the painting on the right contrasts with warmer colors that create more of a country glow. This enhances the imagery and reminds the reader that Will is a country goose. By removing the town and warming the color, the painting is kept in line with the ideas of the story. So tell me, Jake, do you think this painting is unbalanced? No, Paige, I do not think it is unbalanced. The author created a division line close to the middle of the picture. This forms an imaginary division that creates a wall from the town to the country. Did you also notice the man in the doorway? He, weighed, he weighs down the painting for the heavy feel of the crowded and busy town as described earlier in the book. For example, by making an uninterrupted double-page picture of the dense and chaotic town, it draws the reader in to feel like they are being crowded in the streets with Will. This helps add to the storyline by retying this painting back in with earlier happenings of the book. Earlier, we mentioned that the scenery affects the story later on. How so? The painting of Will throwing his quills out of the window creates a unity between Will the Goose and, and William Shakespeare. The diagonal of the falling quills lines up with the diagonal of the outstretched neck of Will the Goose. By using this to create this unity of the two main characters, it creates an aha moment for the reader. Wait, so the titles Will's Quill refers to both Will the Goose and William Shakespeare? You're exactly right, Jake. At this point, the title is clear. Will's quill becomes a double entendre, with the quills belonging physically to Will the Goose, which becomes Shakespeare's quills later. The subtraction of the town, the changes in color, and the addition of the extra man give the story the foreshadowing, balance, and unity that are needed for a smooth storytelling by allowing the reader to see reoccurring themes throughout the book. By consist consistently creating imagery to fit the theme and focus of the story, it allows the reader to be continuously pulled in. This creates a fresh and new angle to hold the interest of the reader. So Paige, do you know the best way to fully appreciate this book? How is that, Jake? Come stop by the Maz Museum here at the Gardner Fine Arts Pavilion, located at the University of Finley, and check out Will's Quill, the story of how a goose saved Shakespeare.